All right. Here we go. Hey, I'm Ryan Tedder, uh, writer, producer, lead singer of One Republic, and enrollment for my 30-day monthly class is open now. On that note, I'm gonna go through and listen to some songs that were written and produced and recorded out in my previous classes. I have never heard these. I don't know who wrote them. So I'm just gonna give my honest, this is, this is what I do every single day with the writers that are signed to me or when artists play me songs they're working on for their album. Oh, you could change this maybe or change this note or this lyric here or there. So I'm really excited to get into this. Here we go. The first song is called 20 something and it's by Aslove and Jordan Shaw. Here we go. Nineties guitar vibes. All right. You ever think about the past like it was yesterday? I do. Feels like a life I forgot I had. Problems just came and went out the blue. Have you ever left your wallet and your keys in the backseat? Drawn texted an ex just to relive the memory. Wished all that your nights was some kind of bad dream. Or you could turn out the lights, but it's okay when you're 20 something, right? You ever wish you could go back and undo a couple Okay. Days? That's really interesting. I really like that a lot. Um, I have a couple thoughts, but I need to listen to a section one more time. The verse, the guitar riff, uh, reminds me of, um, there's a song called Paranoid by Garbage. I think I'm paranoid. And if you listen to that record, it reminds me of that, which is that like kind of, I think mid 90s, late 90s guitar, almost grunge style to it, which I love, which is very in keeping with what's happening right now. Guitar is having a massive comeback. One slight little issue I might have with the chorus. No, tell me. Left your wallet and your keys in the backseat Drawn texted an ex just to Feels like a life Okay, okay. There, there's, there's my issue, yeah. Feels like a life I wanna Have you ever been and I'm in the backseat? So, giving away the entire chorus melody note for note in the verse. And even the cadence of their delivery is almost identical. So by the time I get to that chorus, where I want it to explode or give me some new information and give me like a real payoff, it's not really hitting me that way. The programming and the, the producing, first of all, whoever produced it, the track sounds great. The drum choice uh, is great, the guitar riff is great. The pre-chorus melody is fantastic, the verse is fantastic. When you get to the chorus, you have two options. They're doing a drop chorus, kind of a pump fake, that build in the pre to like suck the, kind of like, think about Charlie Puth attention. You know what I mean? Build, 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 and it's like, you just want attention. And it's a super stripped down. The thing is on the chorus, if you're gonna do a drop chorus, you kind of have to pick a lane production wise. I think there's a little bit, if you're gonna do a drop chorus, they need to strip it back even more. Like crank that bass and try and just ride the kick and the bass for the first half of the chorus. If you're gonna stick with that same melody that they're doing, have you ever went in a seat? Right, right here, check it out. There it is. Tell me, have you ever? Left your wallet and your keys in the backseat John texted an ex just to relive the memory So, if you're gonna use the same melody used in the verse, you need to jump the octave and sing, either layer that high octave, do the do both, what you're doing right there, and then double it a high octave and, and feature that high octave so it feels like a graduation, like there's, wow, I haven't heard that before. Or, have you ever done it? Like that melody right there, which is great. You could go. I haven't heard that note yet. It's in the scale, it's perfect. You're about a third or a fifth up from the highest note you've used before and it's gonna feel like a completely new chapter. So those are the two options on that chorus. Otherwise, I love the lyrics, love the concept, love the production, love the verse and the pre-melody. I think you just gotta tweak that chorus, make it feel a little more special. Okay, up next we have Feel Something by Jessica Lindsay. Jessica, I hope I feel something. I just wanna feel 
Super cool. Um, yeah, this is super cool. I want to listen one more time. There's a da ba 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 ba. It sounds like you're in uh, like B. I don't know if you're in. It sounds like A A B flat B. Th there's a note in the scale that you hit in the verse that's not in the scale. I don't know if it was on purpose or what it was, but it, it definitely is a bit of my only real red flag melodically because it kind of pulled me out of the song for a second. Make sure I'm not imagining things. Reminds me of. Um, London Grammar, which is a, a British group I worked with uh, a number of years ago, and the vocal at the beginning of this, I, for a second I thought it was the singer from London Grammar. Which... <laughs> I think I'm right, I think it was A. Yeah, so we're in A, so now this helps me a little bit. And yet I choose it every time, it's criminal. Great, lyric melody's great. Poised at the peak of my soul's Poised at the peak mm, ba, 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 ba. Yeah That note I, I feel like it was a choice I applaud you for the choice But it, it's like it, it rubs there's, some, there's, a, there's like a pleasant dissonance And there's unpleasant dissonance For me that's a little unpleasant I would probably avoid that note in the scale um, done, done, being so, so here's my thoughts on this. There's some songs that are pitch songs inherently for pitch for pitch, like pop pitching songs, and then there's songs that are more like truly artist songs. So, I'm gonna approach my thoughts on this like a publisher, like who you know, working with my writers. Like if one of my writers handed this in. Unless you're working with one of a couple artists that are in this world, which like you're talking about trip hop, right? This is a Portishead style record. I don't know if you know, presumably you know Portishead. It's like Portishead a little bit with like almost London grammar or even Florence Welch style vocals. Um, so it's very niche in terms of like the production style and the approach. It's really cool. This sounds like the theme song to a TV series. Mayor of East Town, or like like all the new shows on Netflix or HBO or whatever, you know, like Euphoria. This sounds like the, this is the type of song that I would pitch heavily for um, TV license and film. And I mean that, and that's a really good thing. That's not a, a bad thing, that's a very good thing. So, excellent job. I don't hear that stuff very often. This next song is called Loco by Brian Hernandez and Mishners. Let's get into it. Ok, 
Okay, so I, I only have one comment whatsoever on this. Um, I love, love that chorus. Like that's like, I, don't, I speak some Spanish, so I caught a few words here and there. Obviously I know what loco means, um, but the melody is a 10. Like, I'm gonna, that's gonna be stuck in my head the rest of the day. Really cool. I work on a lot of Latin records and Latinx in, in, in both in Spanish and Portuguese. I work with Mauricio and Andres um, a lot, who are the top two producer writers in all of the Latin world. I love Latin music. What's interesting about this is it's not trying to do your standard. I knew from the beginning, I was like, oh, this is not reggaeton tempo. Like, this is completely a different, I was trying to figure out where it was gonna go because it's not, like it was, it's slower than a typical reggaeton and it's not really reggaeton. It just feels like a great ass song. I don't, I, like the, the chorus feels like a smash. My issue is uh, once I come out of that chorus and you've established the beat and I'm finally into it, then you break it down to dreamland again. I just don't think that's the wisest production choice. I would pull the drums back in, maybe drop the drums out of the top of verse two for like half bar or a bar and then pfft, I would get rid of the dream stuff and actually dry up the second verse so you, you're in the rhythm. Once you introduce the audience to a drum pattern that they're moving to, it's unsettling to yank that away. For the most part, once you introduce drums, you can't unintroduce them. That chorus makes the second verse boring and it doesn't have to be. And the reason it feels boring compared to the chorus is because you stripped all the drums out and it's all spacey and like ballady again. So I would encourage you to throw a filter over all the, the guitar, the swimmy guitar and synths, like filter those down and put the drums back in, dry them up. And, and I think you're gonna find out that the second verse feels a lot cooler and moves the song along. All right, that chorus is great. Really, really good. All right, this next song is called Super 8 by Jack Price. <laughs> Sci-fi novel in your hands, a pencil in your pixie cut. Baby, we've got sixty-something years. We got time, just tell me what you wanna hear. In the backseat of your mother's car, we were chasing stars through the This is great. This is really great. This I absolutely love. The lyrics feel very personal and like, I believe you experienced this. You remind me of an artist who I just worked with. I literally, I wrote and produced his next single that comes out I think in a week, um, Alec Benjamin. And your voice reminds me of, of Alec. There's like a youthfulness to it and like a sincerity. I think you're an artist. I don't know if you're, if the objective of doing my class was to be a pitch writer writing for other people or to be an, an artist yourself and improve your own writing. But I think that if you wrote this by yourself with your talent and your skill set, I think you have a real shot at being a successful recording artist. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak as if you are. So I think that uh, lyrically, that like I'm reading your diary thing is, first of all, that's what people wanna hear. They wanna hear vulnerability. They wanna believe that you experienced this, not that you're, being, not that you're selling something to them. The only big mistake you made to me, you had me in this chorus, like you pulled me in on the chorus. The production could be a little finessed in the chorus. It's a little dated. Um, just the kind of the big pumping side chain thing. I think there's just a slightly more modern way to do that chorus production wise, but the verse I love, I like the simple kick. I think four on the floor is coming back by the way. I know it's coming back as a matter of fact and all producers I work with are talking about that, which makes me very happy. Your chorus though, you can't do that chorus and then have your payoff your p be just instrumental for, for four bars with a repeat of the tag once. Like there's a higher level you can get to on that chorus um, right here. And I hope our dates on a super eight so the days like these will last You know when somebody come out and sing dates like things on a super eight and a tango. I wanna tell 
and a super rain in the window. Like, you need that pedal note right there as your post chorus. You know, the reason you're picking that note, you're doing the fifth, right, in the scale of the key that you're in, right? Which is all very satisfying. So, that five though, why don't you just go back there on the post after you do the chorus. Now listen, I want to hear that rhyme, window. Where, where we go, and I can't believe this does in a super eight. Like, go up there and, and hang on that five, because obviously your voice can hit it, and give me that emotional kind of 80s delivery, because that the post just falls apart and you lose me completely, and you had me, I was like, about to have no comments and be like, well, this is, this song is just a perfect 10. So I think you need to dig in more on the post chorus and keep pointing back to the phrase last forever or super eight. I, I think super eight is so much more interesting because it's obviously referencing a camera. So keep figuring out a way to make super eight be the tag at the end of like the, the post, you know, da, 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 and a super eight and then, you know, something out the window up to you to finish the lyrics. But this is really, really great. And I think you, if you can keep working hard, you could be an artist. This next song is called Gold by Heidi Webster. Everyone's looking for treasure. You find a map, you find a road that leads you nowhere. Just looking in empty spaces. You find your soul, you find your worth in other faces. And if you would have known that in a bed of stones you are the gold flickering in the night through the water, through the water. You are the gold when the light is the shine. It's gonna be Great voice. I feel like you might be an artist or an aspiring artist. I'm going to make a few references here because that's how I operate. Hopefully none of these offend you because I think they're all successful, great artists. There's an element of um, Imogen Heap in what you're doing. There's a little bit of Rachel Platten in the uh, lyrical concept and then there's a little bit of uh, Sarah McLaughlin in like your ethereal kind of an angelic voice, which I think is incredible. I have no comments on the verse and the chorus. I think the production could be cooler and more modern. But the drum pattern's right, and the idea behind it, the fundamentals behind the production is right. I think sound selection could be, it could be a little more expansive and bigger. Verse in, in pre is great, super interesting. Like it's it's unique, it's not, didn't, it's not copying anything, which I think is great. Chorus is great. I had this issue with the previous song, I have it with this one too. When you get to the end of this chorus. It's gonna find you. Oh, the like, you don't need that post chorus. Go straight into verse two. And verse two should be four on the floor. Don't try to keep that pattern going in verse two. It's too busy and too complicated. Just doom, doom. Da, 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 da. Those two things alone, I think are gonna really shape up this song tremendously, but overall, killer. All right, this song is called I Could Use a Beach by Dave Cohen. <laughs> Think everyone's been thinking about somewhere they want to go. Shake off the world like summer sand somewhere out on the coast. With some cheap tequila, margarita, don't that sound like liquid freedom? Straw hut shag and a senorita asking you where you're from. I could use a beach, bare feet in the sand, casting away like an island man, little white cat. Crashing my plans, book 25 for a chair and a tan. Ain't no worries, ain't no hurries, ain't no thing to do. Taking the view, do not know about you, but if he asked me, well, I could use a beach. 
All right, I, hold on, I gotta hear this phrase one more time. Yeah, this is really, really good. I'm not gonna comment so much on the country, on the, the production, I think it serve, serves the song. I think lyrically, in the first verse, um, I'm all about breaking from the melody, the math, the pop math, or the country, whatever you wanna call it. Deviating from an established melody, for me, the place that can exist is the second verse. That's almost where I need to hear it. I want, I want you to get away from the obvious, surprise me. One of my just personal cardinal rules that I don't break, you've told the listener on the first melody, which is great, think everyone and think about in place they want to be. I want to hear that melody again. Like you you went off it, just repeat it. Ain't well the say it is said today, and so don't don't today. I just think the second line of verse one should be a mirror image of the first melodically. It's just a little, one of my little whatever, take it or leave it. Unfortunately, the weakest part of your song, in my opinion, or, or, is the actual tag itself. The phrase, I could use a beach, is great. I think there's a better way to land, I could use a beach. In country, and when you're setting up the tag, I don't want it to be a soft rhyme. Soft rhyme is me, beach. Hard rhyme would be preach, beach, teach, beach. Like each, beach, or peach, right? I would try to find a hard rhyme to, it's like, I'm not trying to preach, but I could use a beach, I don't know. But I just think there's a more clever way to set up I could use a beach. Every other part of the, of the record I absolutely love. I think you're a strong, strong country top liner. Yeah, this is this is great. Good job. Thank you so much for watching. I love just showing everybody whatever it is I know, right? We're just picking up skill sets from different writers as we go along, and this is what I do every day. So if you have any interest in, in punching up your songwriting or production skills, enrollment for my class is on now. Link is in the description. Thanks for your time. Man, that was awesome. Really good song. Huh?